بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام where we try to perfect the art of reciting the Quran I am your host Abu Ammar Yasir Qadi We all know that many of the surahs of the Quran begin with various letters Alif, Lam, Mim, Yasin, Ha, Mim, Sad, Noon, so on and so forth These letters, they are known in Arabic as the muqatta'at, or the disjointed letters. Now the scholars of tafsir, the scholars of the Qur'an, they have differed greatly over the precise meaning of these letters. Many merely just give up and say, only Allah knows, we have no idea what the actual meaning of these letters is. Some scholars state that the purpose of these letters is meant to confuse and baffle the disbelievers. Others say that these letters are acronyms, that they represent, for example, the names of Allah. So Alif stands for Allah, and Lam stands for Al-Latif, and so on and so forth. Yet others try to assign numerical values to these letters, and that for sure is not a correct opinion. It seems, and Allah knows best, that the strongest opinion is that these letters are an indication of the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. Because these letters are exactly 14 in number. And the Arabic alphabet is composed of 28 letters. So Allah Azza wa Jal uses 14 of these letters as if to tell the disbelievers that look, I am mentioning the Qur'an, I'm reciting the Qur'an in the very speech that you use, the very letters that you use, can you produce something similar to it? These are 14 letters. Can you use the remaining 14 and produce a Qur'an, produce a book similar to it? And a factor which adds weight to this particular opinion is the fact that almost every time Allah mentions these letters, He immediately emphasizes the Qur'an after it. Alif, Lam, Mim, Thalik al-Kitabu. This is the book, there is no doubt in it. Hamim wal-Kitab al-Mubin. The book that is clear. So on and so forth. So, Qaf wal-Qur'an al-Majid, Qaf, the noble Qur'an. Almost every time Allah mentions these letters in the Qur'an, He immediately follows it up by discussing and by emphasizing and by showing the blessings of the book itself. Therefore, Allah knows best, it seems that the strongest opinion is that these letters, in fact, are a challenge to the disbelievers. That here are 14 of the letters, produce a Qur'an equivalent to it, if you can. And as Allah says in Surah Baqarah, that they will never be able to do it, even if they all cooperated together to do so, they would never be able to produce a Qur'an similar to this Qur'an. With this introduction, we now move on to the very topic of these letters, continuing along our rules of Mad. We talk about now the beginnings of the surahs, and this, alhamdulillah, is our final episode regarding the mudud. After this, we move on to another topic. So we've had six episodes regarding the Mad. This will be the final one, and this is known as Al-Mad Al-Lazim Al-Harfi, don't get confused, don't worry about the names. The point is that this topic deals with al muqatta'at or these letters, Alif, Lam, Mim, Ha, Mim, Sad, Qaf, all of these letters at the beginning of the Qur'an. When do you do a mad on them and when do you not do a mad? This is the topic of today's show. And we say that all of these 14 letters can be categorized into two, three distinct categories with regards to the rules of mad, obviously. The first is those letters, or in fact the letter, in which you only pronounce the name and you have no mud whatsoever. No mud. And that is only one, and that is the letter alif. So anytime the alif occurs in these beginnings of the surahs, you merely pronounce the alif, and you don't make any mud on it. You say the letter alif, and then you move on. As in here, alif, lam, mim. Okay? The second category are those letters where you are supposed to elongate to have a mud of two harakas. Not more, not less. There is no option in any of the muqatta'at. You have to be precise in the length of the mud. And there are five letters where you only have to pronounce them two harakas. The ha, the ya, the ta, the ha, and the ra. This, uh, the, the acronym is hayyun tahura. Hayyun Tahura. Once again, we've been exposed to a lot of acronyms. All of this is so that you can uh, memorize these letters with greater ease. So you're supposed to memorize Hayyun Tahura, and then you know that Hayyun Tahura are those letters which you only uh, elongate to two harakas. So for example, you have the, uh, the Taha. Remember the beginning of Surah Taha? It starts off with Taha. That's all you do. You don't make it longer. Taha. Neither do you make it shorter. Taha. You actually make it Taha, exactly. Two harakas, exactly. And the last category 
are those letters which you prolong to six harakas. And these are the remaining uh, letters and they are the noon, the qaf, the sad, the ayn, the seen, the lam, the kaf, and the meme. And uh, the mnemonic, the memory trick for this is naqasa aslakum. Naqasa aslakum. If you keep on repeating this, naqasa aslakum, you will memorize that these letters, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Eight letters you have to prolong them to six. Five letters you do it to only two. And one you only pronounce the letter, making a total of 14 letters of the muqatta'at. Okay? So again, very simple, very easy to understand. All you have to do, remember we say over and over again, that the rules of tajweed are not confusing. They might be a lot in number, but they're very simple. You just have to take them one at a time. So the rulings with regards to the muqatta'at are that they are divided into three categories. The first category is the letter which you pronounce without any mad, and that is the alif. And the second category are those letters which we pronounce with a mad or an elongation of two harakas, and there are five letters, hayyun tahura. And the final category are those letters which you pronounce with a long mad of six harakas, and this is combined in the phrase, naqasa aslakum. So let us now recite some of the beginnings of the surahs, and we'll restrict ourselves to the beginning of the surahs in order that we get a better idea of uh, these letters. Let us start off with obviously the first surah in the Quran or the second surah after Surah Al Fatiha, Surah Al Baqarah. Okay, in the Surah Al Baqarah, all of you know the beginning is Alif Lam Mim. Let us now look at this chart. Where does Alif go? Alif goes over here in the beginning. Lam, is it in Hayyun Tahura? No, it is in Naqasa Aslakum here. Okay, likewise with the Mim, it is over. Here. So if you wanted to recite the Alif Lam Mim, how would you recite it? Alif Lam Mim. Okay, here is an important point, and that is that uh, when you are reciting the Muqatta'at, you must also apply the rules of Tajweed. Okay? So write out the Lam. You have Lam, and then you start Mim. You have two Mims, you must do a Ghunna in the middle. Remember we said when two means combined, the first of which is silent, the second of which moves, you must uh, have an idgham shafawi. So you apply the rules of tajweed, the rules of ghunna, while you are reciting the muqatta'at. You don't say, alif lam mim. No, you must do a ghunna. Alif lam mim. So the lam, six harakas. The mim, six harakas. And in between the two, ghunna of Two harakas, okay? Amr, can you recite for us? The alif lam mim? Alif lam mim. MashaAllah, very good. What other surah has a beginning that is uh, uh, we should go to? Let's try. Al Imran is the same, right? So, uh, Surah Maryam will get to there. Let's go in chronolog chron 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 chronological order, excuse me. Let's try uh, Surah Al A'raf first. Surah Al A'raf, and then we move to. Uh, Okay, Surah A'raf is the seventh surah in the Quran. Here in Surah Al-A'raf, we have uh, Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad. We have one more letter, Sad. Where does Sad come? Sad comes once again in the six harakas. Okay, so let us try uh, Surah Al-A'raf. The beginning of Surah Al-A'raf would be like this. Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad. Notice, lam, how many? How long? Six harakas. Six Mim, how long? Six harakas. Sad, how long? Six harakas. Where was the ghunna? Between the lam and the mim, and that is it. I didn't do a ghunna between the mim and the sad. Why? Because there is no ghunna between. Uh, write out the mim, you will have a mim, ya, mim. And then write out the sad, you begin with sad. This will be idhar shafawi. So there is no uh, ghunna over here. Alif Lam Mim Sad So there's a ghunna between the Lam and the Mim and there's no ghunna between the Mim and the Sad uh, You also have a Qalqala, very good, Jazakallah Khair Sad Okay, because of the fact that we ended with a Dal sound because we're pronouncing the letter Okay, so we have uh, one ghunna and one qalqala in the very muqatta'at. So we're applying the previous rules, nothing new. It's just that we're applying them in a different way. Let us move on to Surah Al-Ra'd now. Okay, Surah Al-Ra'd. 
Surah Ta'ad is what number in the Quran? 13. The 13th Surah. Okay, here we have Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. Here we have a Ra instead of the Sad. Now where does Ra come? Notice it is in this one. The second category. Okay, so we only prolonged it to, elongated to two harakas. Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. Ra. I didn't say Ra and move on. Because it is of the second category where we only prolong it to two harakas. Let us move on to Surah Taha then, the next one. We're not going over all the surahs, just some of them that have these uh, beginnings. What number is Surah Taha? Taha is 20. Okay. Taha, obviously both of them, right here, Ta and Ha. Okay, both of them are two harakas long. So we pronounce it Taha, Taha. If we were to make it longer, it's a mistake. Ta or Taha, mistake. Each one has to be two harakas. Taha. Okay, now let's move on to... Oh, we forgot Maryam actually, right? Yes. yes. Maryam is a very uh, interesting one because I have a lot of letters. Maryam is a red, white before it, number 19. Okay, look at Maryam, uh, surah number 19. We have the kaf. Firstly, the kaf. Where's the kaf? Six Over here. Harakas. Six harakas. Six then we have the ha. Two harakas. Two harakas. Then we have the ya. Where's the ya? Two. Also two harakas. Then we have the ayn. Six harakas. Six harakas. Then we have the... Saad. Saad. Six harakas. So we have six... Two, two, six, six. Now we also have to look at the rules of the rules of uh, of, of uh, ghunna. Yes. Kaf ha obviously will not have any ghunna between it. Ha ya ayn sad. That's it. So there will have a ghunna here because ayn you write it ayn ya noon, and then you begin with the sad. This will be what type of ghunna? Ikhfa. And then there will be a qalqala where at the end of sad because there's a silent dal. So we'll recite this one. كاف ها يا عين صاد. Okay, so we notice we have the kaf six harakas, the ha two ya two عين six عين six عين six with the إخفاء with the غنة and then the صاد has the قلقلة. Okay. The عين the عين is considered a madlin, but we'll do it six. Uh, it is considered to be six over here as well. So why don't we all both do kaf ha So I'll repeat after me. Kaf ha ya عين صاد. Kaf ha ya عين صاد. Okay, so once again, it's very easy. You just remem remember the letters that are there and you see which ones apply to where. Let us go to another surah. Let us try uh, Surah Ashura, which is surah number 43 in the Quran. Surah Ashura. 42, 42, you're right, 42 of the Quran. Here we have a ha and a meme and then ayn seen qaf. Okay, so we have once again five letters here. So once again, we notice that only the ha is of the two harakas and then the meem is down here six six, six. also the ayn also six. the seen also the qaf okay hamim ayn qaf here we have the ha Two harakas. Yes. Seen what? Uh, meme was six, six harakas. Obviously, there's no no khalqa, no no ghunna because nothing comes after it. Meme. Ayn. What happened here? Ikhfa. We have we have the six and then we have a ghunna yes. after it. Ikhfa. Ayn. The ghunna there. Then we have the seen six harakas. Another ikhfa. Seen. Qaf. But there's no khalqa because we end on a fa. Qaf. So there's no khalqa. Hamim Ayn Sin Qaf So we have Ha, two, Mim, Ayn, Sin, Qaf was six each and we did the particular Ghunnas uh, and the Qalqalas uh, that were done before. So this is a pretty easy uh, topic, Alhamdulillah. We're, we're talking about the Muqatta'at, the beginning of the, the Surahs. And we merely divide them into three categories. The first category is the letter which is pronounced without any mud, and that is the alif. The second are those five letters which are pronounced with a mud of two harakas, and that is 
Hayyun Tahura. The five letters of Hayyun Tahura. And the final category are the letters that are, pronou- are the, pronounced with a mud of six harakas. And these are Na Qasa Aslakum. And make sure that when you pronounce them, you do the proper Ghunnas and the proper Qalqalas where applicable. This brings us to the conclusion of today's episode. I hope to see you in our next episode. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.